Hello, this is Greg from SharePoint Maven. And in this video, I will show you and explain to you how you can create a simple document management system in SharePoint. Now, I must uh, first probably mention this uh, document management system or DMS uh, means different things to uh, different uh, people and organizations. Some might apply by uh, document management uh, simply a way to uh, store you know, documents and folders in the cloud. Uh, some uh, imply uh, something a bit more sophisticated where you have uh, um, a pretty fancy, you know, tagging mechanisms and uh, possibly uh, some workflows and automation and approvals are going on within the uh, document management system. So first, what I would like to do is define uh, essentially uh, the use case or the scope of this particular tutorial. Uh, what I mean by document management system uh, for the purpose of this video is essentially the ability to create uh, a document library uh, in SharePoint uh, where instead of you know organizing files into folders and subfolders uh, we utilize a tagging mechanism essentially a way to uh, you know tag and organize our documents uh, through the um, tags or as we call it in SharePoint metadata. Perhaps I will just start uh, by showing you uh, how users typically organize documents in SharePoint, and then I will show you and demonstrate uh, the more kind of advanced uh, technique through uh, metadata tags. Uh, so typically, um, and I'm sure this is the case with your organization, you probably have a SharePoint site, and on that site, of course, uh, you have a document library, and in that library, you have files and folders. And typically, this is what you get to see, right? Uh, essentially, a uh, folder hierarchy. Uh, in most cases, it's a much, much longer list. And you have all these different folders. And then you have uh, other subfolders and maybe some other subfolders. And then finally, the documents inside of those um, you know, folders. So that's essentially a typical way to structure documents in uh, SharePoint Online. However, there is another way to organize documents in SharePoint, and this is actually what makes SharePoint, uh, you know, stand out from other uh, cloud uh, document management uh, systems, and that is the ability to organize uh, documents via tags. Let me show you an example. So I'm going to click on this policies site. And what you see right now on the screen uh, is actually I have a dedicated site uh, for policies. Uh, here it is. And uh, on that site, I have a document library. I also decided to call it policies. Uh, but if you notice, uh, instead of you know folders and subfolders, uh, you just pretty much see uh, a, a bunch of documents, and they have all these different uh, tags applied to them. Uh, so you might be wondering, you know, what is the you know benefit of having uh, all those different tags versus the folders and subfolders I showed you previously? Uh, well, there are two uh, main benefits. Uh, benefit number one is that uh, when you upload a document to this library, everyone sticks to the same naming convention. All right, so um, in this case, uh, I defined, you know, the several columns. So for each policy I upload to this library, I tag it against an expiration date, an owner of the policy, you know, which department owns it, the status and the author. And all of these uh, columns, all of these tags are made up. We will actually uh, create those together during this uh, session. So again, the first benefit is that everyone sticks uh, to the same uh, naming convention, the same tagging convention, uh, if you will, in our case. So when I upload a document, uh, essentially everyone has to fill in the same, you know, metadata, um, you know, tags, right? There is no way users can just misspell things or uh, come up with their own tags. And essentially they have to choose from the list uh, that's available, uh, um, you know, within the dropdown. So again, benefit number one is the fact that uh, unlike with folders and subfolders, right, you know, you can just create your own folder hierarchy and, you know, call it whatever you want. Uh, there is really nothing that stops you. With uh, metadata tags, uh, you pretty much uh, stick to the common naming convention. 
Uh, the second major benefit is that if I need to find something in this library, it's super, super uh, easy and user friendly. Again, if I go to the folder uh, library, uh, essentially, I really have to be familiar with the folder hierarchy, right? I need to know which folder to go to. And, you know, if I use the search box, I'm pretty sure it will give me a bunch of irrelevant results because, um, you know, search is so powerful in SharePoint and it searches file names and folder names and the content inside of the documents. Uh, but in our case, we have everything tagged. I can still rely on the search box. All right, I can still kind of find everything through the keywords, but I can also um, utilize the filters pane. When I work with my clients and try to explain them uh, the concept of metadata and the benefits of metadata, I always uh, you know, give them uh, the Amazon example. So uh, let's go to amazon.com, all right? So uh, here I am, and let's shop for men's shoes. So you type something into the uh, search box, right? Uh, to find uh, whatever it is that you're looking for. And if you notice, I end up with like, you know, 50,000 results, a bit too much for me when I'm shopping for shoes. Uh, but uh, look what Amazon did on the left hand side. And this is probably something you do on a regular basis when you do online shopping, um, you have all these different filters and essentially what they saw this are different properties of the shoe every shoe has a brand and a price and size and you know color and so on and essentially all you need to do so let me pick a few filters uh, we have 50,000 results right now i'm going to pick uh, a particular brand all right uh, right here and look at this i have 1000 results all of a sudden so it's uh, something that's a little bit uh, more uh, you know, manageable now. And uh, let's just choose a few more characteristics. You know, we'll uh, choose a particular size of the shoe. And again, now we are down to 137. And you get the idea. We can pretty much choose any of those, you know, filters um, and uh, essentially look at this. Now we are uh, all of a sudden uh, down to very manageable 47 results. Uh, not only we can filter by metadata, we can also sort uh, by uh, those tags and metadata. Uh, and essentially, yeah, right here, as you can see, we can sort by some like the price and, you know, review and so on. So essentially what Amazon did, they um, tagged each and every uh, shoe in this case with a specific, um, you know, a specific, um, you know, tag, if you will, uh, right, a specific property. And this allows you to do your online shopping quite efficiently. Imagine what your shopping experience would have been if Amazon decided to organize uh, their shoes uh, in folders, right? You would probably navigate to a particular brand folder and then there would be subfolders for the size and then subfolders for the color and so on. It would be impossible uh, for you to find something really quickly uh, because we utilize the different properties, uh, essentially right of the shoe, the different metadata tags, all of a sudden, uh, it's a much smoother shopping experience for us. And this is essentially uh, what we are trying to achieve in SharePoint, if you think about it. Unlike uh, Amazon, right, uh, in SharePoint, we don't deal with shoes, we deal with, uh, you know, files uh, and different documents. So we are going to be creating metadata tags for our documents and tagging them. And this will allow us uh, to easily filter and uh, find stuff in SharePoint. So let me actually quickly show you what it is we're trying to achieve, and then we'll go step by step and make it happen and create a document management system uh, together. So I already obviously created this library with uh, all these different metadata tags and everything is tagged. Of course, I already uploaded and tagged everything. And this allows me to do this. I can click on the filters pane. Remember with Amazon, we had the filters on the left hand side and SharePoint, we have the filters on the right. And um, all of this, you know, metadata columns, I can filter them. So I can set a particular expiration date. You know what I would like to see? I want to see all the policies tagged with HR. And I only want to see, um, you know, status spending. And I also want to uh, essentially sort uh, by uh, an expiration date.
I would like to uh, group uh, my policies by uh, author. So I'm going to do that. And again, I'm going to sort it by uh, expiration date. And you know what? I also would like to see just active ones, just like that. So essentially with metadata, you can slice and dice your information any way you want. You are not uh, restricted to a particular uh, you know, folder and subfolder hierarchy. Uh, every single user can organize the documents. Uh, first of all, easily find the documents, but also easily organize the documents and visualize the documents uh, their own way. Now, there are several steps involved when it comes to the creation of document management system in SharePoint. Um, but uh, the first step in the process is to define the various categories of documents uh, that you want to organize through metadata. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So uh, when we create metadata, all right, at the end of the day, we will be creating different metadata tags. The columns, we will be creating them at the library level. And what that means is that whatever metadata columns we you know, create at this particular library, they will apply to the whole library. It's all or nothing, all right? We cannot you know, create metadata that will only uh, apply maybe to a particular folder within a library. It's all or nothing. Once we create all these different columns, they pretty much apply to the whole library. So uh, every time, uh, let's say you were working for HR and we have different sets of documents. We have policies and then we have medical forms and we have something else. Essentially, if we want to organize all of these documents uh, through metadata, we would need to create separate libraries for all of these different buckets of information. Why? Because policies might have their own metadata. Uh, and maybe medical forms will have their own and then uh, some other category of documents um, will have uh, you know, its own unique metadata. Uh, the second step is also uh, kind of a prep you know, step. Uh, this is where you would need to define uh, the actual metadata tags for each and every uh, category, for each and every group of documents. Uh, so for example, let's say you identified policies as a group of documents you want to organize. Um, you, th so in this particular step, what you would need to do is define the columns you would uh, want to create. And um, I know it might be a bit challenging, especially if you are just migrating from the folder hierarchy, right from file shares to SharePoint, this might be uh, obviously a bit you know challenging to come up with I always I always again uh, refer to Amazon example so when you let's say again go to amazon.com and shop for shoes all right uh, all this uh, filters on the left hand side this are uh, once again all these different properties of the shoe the tags uh, but the reason why um, Amazon decided to add all of those tags is because that's how um, that's how users are searching for information in this particular case for shoes. So when I'm searching for shoes, what's important to me? Well, obviously, you know, the, the price, right? The, the brand and obviously the size and maybe even the color. So uh, again, you know, Amazon uh, decided to add all of these filters uh, because uh, these are the filters that are necessary for um, you know, users to, to find certain products uh, within their store. It's no different with uh, documents in SharePoint. So when I'm searching for a policy, for example, right, what's important to me? Well, I probably want to find a policy with a specific status and uh, maybe a specific expiration date. And uh, maybe uh, I need to find a policy that belongs to an HR department. So essentially try to think in terms of, you know, what it is, you know, when I'm searching for a particular a uh, piece of content, what's important to me? Or let me give an ex another example. If let's say you decide to organize invoices uh, and tag them, right? What's important to me when I'm searching for the invoice? Well, I want to know maybe, um, you know, the status of the invoice, if it, if it was processed or, you know, paid, etc. 
maybe I want to know who the owner of the invoice is. Uh, maybe I want to know um, the due date of the invoice. So uh, stuff like that, essentially any characteristics, any properties uh, that will um, help you find the, the right uh, content, the right document, uh, that's the metadata you would need to create. So once you define your categories, different buckets of documents, and once you define uh, essentially the metadata tags, right, the columns for each of those categories, now we can proceed and actually start creating our uh, document management system. Uh, you know what I'm going to do first? Um, I am actually going to uh, create a brand new library. So this happens to be an HR site I created previously, and it has a bunch of uh, libraries already on the site. Uh, for the purpose of this exercise, we are going to create a brand new library because we are going to organize SOPs, or Standard Operating Procedures, and I'm going to create a brand new library. Uh, it's going to be a blank library, and yeah, this is the library we would like to create, just like that. And um, obviously, by default, when you create a brand new library, you don't really have any kind of custom metadata. You do have uh, the system metadata, like you know the file name and modified and modified by. But we are actually going to uh, create uh, our own uh, metadata. So what I will probably do is kind of replicate the same columns you saw previously, and uh, show you a few kind of options available with those. So let's go ahead and start creating the uh, columns. Now, there are different ways to create columns in SharePoint. And um, there are, you know, what I'm going to show you in this particular example is how to define, um, you know, and create columns at the library level. However, there are more advanced techniques where you can standardize on your metadata across um, you know, essentially the entire tenant, all right? So you can use and reuse the same columns over and over again uh, between, you know, among different uh, sites and libraries. Um, I will mention something about uh, at the very end of this video, I actually offer a number of, um, you know, training courses on those topics, but for the purpose of this video, I will, uh, we will create uh, essentially metadata columns uh, at this uh, library. Uh, to do that, you just need to click Add Column. And by the way, uh, if you're just a regular site member, all right, you don't need to be the owner of the site to create metadata columns at the library level. So you should be able to define those as well. And you know what I'm going to do? The first column uh, I would like to create would be the choice column because I want to specify um, you know, the essentially the owner of the SOP. It could be different departments, for example. So I'm going to call my column just like that. And it's a choice column because it's essentially a drop down of choices. And I'm going to specify a different departments I have within my, um, you know, organization just like that. Uh, and uh, you have a few choices here, but uh, let me just add a few uh, just like that. Perfect. And you can actually, um, you know, change the colors if you want, just like that. All right. And uh, yeah, let's not uh, waste uh, our time on this right here, but just to show you kind of uh, the different options that we have. All right. Uh, now, um, I also want to be able to, so by default, it's a single choice. So that means I can only assign one uh, owner, but, you know, in some cases, maybe an SOP, right, and multiple departments, um, you know, own the same, um, you know, the same SOP, I want to be able to select multiple choices. So for that, you click on more options and allow multiple selections. All right. And if you think about it, this is uh, yet another uh, huge benefit of metadata, because if we were to use folders, right, you cannot be, uh, you would need to essentially duplicate files at this point, right? If you have a single policy and it belongs in two different, maybe, uh, you know, folders, right, department names, you would need to create duplicates. Here, with metadata, you don't have to. With metadata, essentially, right, I would be able to apply multiple tags. It's still going to be one file, but, you know, essentially, um, multiple tags would apply. So just like that. We can default to a specific value, but you know what? It doesn't make sense in our case. So uh, let's click Save, and uh, our first column uh, has been created. Uh, the next column we are going to create is going to be an expiration date. So that's a date and time column. 
and we click that. And uh, yeah, let's call it expiration date, uh, just like that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can include the time, but you know, it's just a date. We don't need a time stamp. And yeah, there are not uh, uh, there are no other options that we need to um, specify here. The next column I want to create would be the status. All right, again, that's a choice. You know, choice is a drop down essentially. And uh, yeah, I will give it this name, just like that, status. And we want maybe um, you know active, you know pending. All right, and maybe I don't know um, rejected. Right, I don't know if. Uh, if you maybe have some sort of um, you know uh, reviews here and approvals, maybe you want to track those um, you know different statuses. Uh, let me just change the colors a little bit, uh, just like that. All right, so uh, here we go. Perfect. Three choices now. Uh, we can default. You know what? We'll default to pending maybe. All right, and then the users uh, can adjust uh, essentially the choices as they uh, as they tag them. The other column I would like to create would be the author, all right? Maybe who is the author, and that's that's a person, all right? Usually, <laughs> so uh, we are going to choose the uh, um, you know uh, essentially the person uh, type of column, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll give it this name. And um, what I really like is we can also I think this makes it a little bit more attractive. We can display the photos. All right, so when we, uh, the beauty about this column is that when you tag documents, um, uh, essentially you draw the names from your employee directory. And if the user uploaded the photo, the, it would show up. So it will actually make it a little bit more pretty. So let's click save. Let's add another column uh, just to show you the capabilities. Um, I would like to add a column uh, called uh, translation, all right, translation required. And for example, let's say uh, you are part of a multinational corporation, right? And maybe all your SOPs are in English and you need to provide uh, translation into another language, right, for other countries. And uh, this is just going to be yes or no type of column, all right? Uh, this is just a designator uh, on whether uh, a particular SOP needs to be translated into different uh, language. So I'm going to choose yes or no type of column, and um, I'm going to call it like this, just to uh, so we have something to play with. And um, yeah, we can default to either yes or no. Let's default to no. All right, and yeah, once again, there are not that many additional options here, so let's click Save. Let's proceed to the next step, and the next step is super important. So remember how uh, on this particular library, on this example I've shown you, we were able to click on this filters pane, and we saw all of this, um, you know, essentially filters appear. And guess what? Uh, once you create your columns, uh, we need to pin them to this filters pane. And here is how you do it. Uh, you click on the, um, you know, essentially the column itself, drop down, column settings, pen to filters pane, just like that. Now, um, it, it seems like there is nothing happening here, but the column was added to the filters pane. Uh, the reason nothing appears here is because we don't have any uh, documents uh, essentially uploaded and tagged. Uh, but uh, be rest assured that we, when we do that, uh, the, you know, essentially the appropriate filters will appear. But again, in order for those, um, you know, in order for all of those columns to appear on the filters pane, uh, you do need to pin them. So we just did this one. Uh, let's continue. You know what? I don't want to add this one. I want to add this one. All right. So you just say pen, pen, pen. Again, we uh, repeat the steps for all the columns. And just don't forget to do that. Just don't forget to do that. Now, what actually happens is that uh, some of these columns are added. Uh, but if you want to absolutely 100% to be assured that all of them are added, and in this particular order, you need to pin them, just like I've shown you. And the order they will appear in the filters pane, essentially, the order you have them in here, from left to right, they will appear in the same exact or, you know, order uh, from top to the bottom. 
one other quick thing that I like to do is, so by default, when you create all those columns, right, they appear to the right, essentially. But you know what? I don't need to see this modified and modified by. So I'm just going to, you know, it's okay for them to appear at the end uh, of our, uh, you know, library. We can even hide them, all right? We can even hide them. As a matter of fact, you know what? Because uh, this is a library that will be accessible by everyone, we really don't need um, them to see, um, you know, essentially what, uh, you know, what who modified and modified by. So let's hide those columns so we have a little bit more uh, real estate to, uh, you know, play with. So we're finally ready to upload the documents and tag them. Uh, let's do that. So uh, in order to upload the documents, we have a few choices. We can either upload them using the uh, upload button or we can drag and drop them into our library. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and upload them uh, from my computer. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose a bunch of documents that I have, just sample documents I have on my computer and upload them. So once uploaded, this is what your library will look like. Now, essentially, uh, obviously, majority of metadata is empty because we yet have to tag our documents. The reason why we uh, have um, the status column uh, filled out is remember we for this particular you know column we said uh, we wanted to default to pending, but obviously we can change that now. So how do we tag documents now that they're in SharePoint? Uh, quite easy. Uh, you just click on the checkbox next uh, to a document you want to tag, and uh, you will click on the little eye in a circle. And this, what we call it, a document information panel will open up. And this is where you get to assign all the different values that we uh, created um, you know, in terms of uh, different columns. So um, for the owner, I'm going to tag it against HR and IT, just like that. Remember, we said we can do multiple values for this one. Uh, for the expiration date, we are going to set a specific date. You know what? We can change the status right here as well. And uh, for the uh, author, we are going to, again, remember this, uh, the employees. So it's pulling the information from the employee directory. Uh, so it's displaying my name and a profile photo. Great. And then translation required. Uh, remember, this is uh, either yes or no. So you can either check on check. Uh, just like that, and uh, essentially uh, we tagged this first uh, row, we tagged this first document. Now, you can actually use the same approach and tag uh, multiple documents. So let's say these two documents, maybe they have similar metadata. You can just highlight you know, a bunch of them, just like I did. And uh, whenever you highlight more than one, essentially uh, it's the same mechanism, but now it's bulk edit properties. So essentially whatever you apply here will apply to pretty much multiple documents uh, at once. So let me quickly uh, do that. Uh, I'm going to fill all of this out. And uh, yeah, let's leave it alone just like that. Uh, very important if you make changes to a number of documents, don't forget to click the save button until you click save, the metadata you know will not be applied. Let me now show you uh, another technique to uh, tag documents. And actually, that's my favorite technique. So as you upload documents, right, you typically upload maybe, um, you know, a few documents at a time, right? Maybe 10, 20, 50 documents. And tagging documents one by one might, might be a bit of a pain. So uh, no worries, though. Uh, what you can do is we have this cool feature called Edit It in Grid View. So when you click this edit and grid view, uh, your library goes into Excel like mode, all right? Essentially, it looks like a table now, and it's almost like filling out an Excel document. Look at this. I can easily now um, just fill it out as if I'm filling out uh, an Excel document, just like that. And let me do a few more uh, choices, for example. So uh, you know what I'm going to do? Let's assume that all of those documents, they share the same metadata, just like in Excel, you can also drag and drop just like that. So essentially, when you do this grid view, 
uh, you can pretty much expedite the whole process of filling out uh, your uh, metadata. So let me just do a few more, um, you know, uh, fields here. So we have something to play with. And uh, yeah, uh, just like that, we can, uh, you know what, this is uh, good enough. Again, I'm going to, let's assume uh, it's something like this and let's assume uh, it's something like this. Here we go. I'm going to again, bulk edit. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a few uh, choices over here, just like that. And uh, uh, again, I'm going to tag it against my name. And then uh, for the, f you know, for the translation, right, I can just, again, you know, as you can see, pretty uh, easy for you to uh, fill out. Uh, and when you're done with all of those changes, um, exit grid view, all right, essentially, just make sure everything is saved. And look at this, essentially, in a, a matter of just a few seconds, we were able to tag uh, the whole library uh, and all the documents with uh, metadata. Uh, the next thing you might want to do when you uh, utilize uh, metadata for your SharePoint DMS is to create additional views. So you see when you uh, create a brand new library, let's say, and tag all the documents. So by default, you're kind of working in this old documents view. Uh, but, uh, and obviously the users will be able to filter um, you know, our documents through the filters pane, but also maybe you want to help them out and essentially create the views that they can use uh, right away without additional filtering. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, for example, you know what? I want to create a view that displays only, uh, let's say, uh, active um, SOPs, all right? So here is a trick, here is a trick. Uh, you can use this, uh, first of all, filter pane. Remember, uh, we built it in one of the previous steps and I can just uh, filter for active. And you know what I'm going to do because I don't want my users to do it manually every single time. I'm going to create a view for them. Drop down, save view as, uh, all right? And make sure, don't click save because if you do, it will override this uh, old documents view. Make sure, um, you give it a unique name, all right? And uh, there is this checkbox, so by default it's on. So um, when you click save, this view will be visible to everyone. If you uncheck that, then this view will only be visible to you, whoever is creating that view. But you know what? Uh, let's actually create it for everyone. And you click save. So now uh, you still have uh, you know both of the views, right? The default view and then if my users need to see all the active SOPs, here we go. Let me actually create another quick view just to kind of show you the uh, capabilities. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to create a view where it uh, groups it by uh, author, uh, just like that. And then I also want to sort it uh, by uh, expiration date, all right? Uh, just like that. All right, so we're grouping it by author, but then at the same time, uh, I want to maybe sort it by expiration date. And again, I want to save this view for everyone to enjoy. Uh, you click on this drop down, save view uh, as, and um, yeah, let's uh, give it a name uh, just like that. All right, and click, um, you know, again, save. It's a public uh, view, all right. Uh, now, uh, let me show you one more trick um, uh, and kind of something you will need to know in case if you are creating this uh, grouped views, uh, they always uh, will appear, if you build them through this interface, they will always appear uh, kind of expanded. You see, yeah, it, it does what I asked it to do. It groups by author, but you know, let's say I have hundreds of documents here, right? It's not going to, to look uh, nice. It's just going to be a lot of, uh, you know, uh, vertical scroll. What I would like to do is I would like to, you know, uh, for them to be kind of collapsed by default. Unfortunately, uh, it's not possible through the modern interface. So here's what you need to do if you want it to be uh, collapsed by default. Uh, once you build, uh, once you create a view, just click that little drop down, click edit uh, current view. And uh, this is how we built views with all the version of SharePoint. Uh, this was kind of the old interface. And uh, one of the options here, group by, right here and um, 
so yeah, by default, it's expanded, right? You see, you have to do this, all right? You have to do this and just click OK. So it's uh, nothing extraordinary. And look at this, you see here? So I'm back to my uh, default view all documents. And then if I click on group by author, it's a much, much a nicer experience now. And in my opinion, uh, organized a little bit better. Uh, the next thing you might want to do with uh, your DMS, and this is again, yet another benefit, huge benefit of uh, those metadata tags, uh, you might want to format your columns. For example, what I would like to do is actually compare an expiration date to today's date. So if expiration date is in the future, I want um, the date of the cell to be highlighted in green. And if expiration date is in the past, uh, I want it to be highlighted in red. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, it's very similar to what you typically do in Excel. So you click the drop down, and you click column settings. And I want to format this column. All right, and I can format, I guess, and add uh, different colors and borders. But I want to do conditional formatting. So be, essentially, I'm going to base it on a specific rule. And this is where you set the rule. So um, let's now uh, set up the rule. So I'm going to say if the expiration date is after, and then I'm going to choose, you can specify a specific date or today, all right? Uh, I want, and this is where you say that if it's after today, so that's in the future, I want it to be uh, green. So I'm going to actually uh, do something like this. And then I would like to add another rule. Uh, so, uh, and that will be, again, expiration date. And uh, I'm going to say is uh, on or before. All right, let's do that. And again, I'm comparing to uh, today. And I want this to be um, red, just like that. All right. And um, yeah, let's uh, see what uh, we did. Essentially, we built two, uh, you know, rules, uh, comparing the expiration date to the, you know, to essentially today and click save and uh, look at this uh, now essentially, right? I mean, you can still obviously um, sort uh, from old to new and vice versa, but you can also uh, kind of highlight um, and see if SOP is, you know, uh, a past expiration date or if it's something that's happening in the future. Now that we uh, built our SharePoint DMS, uh, let me show you how we can benefit from it, how we can use it. So um, look, just like on Amazon website, we can use this search box and search you know, for different keywords, but we can also obviously write the whole idea uh, of building out this uh, metadata columns was so that we can also filter our library. So uh, I only have a few documents here, but let's pretend we have maybe several hundred documents, so quite a large uh, you know, list of documents. Uh, now with the filter pane, I can easily find what I'm looking for. I only want to see HR documents, or I want to see uh, the ones where, um, you know, uh, that are tagged against IT and, uh, or maybe legal, all right? Um, I want to see active documents. And at the same time, I want to sort it by uh, the expiration date. All right, and on top of that, uh, only the ones written by, you know, me, all right? Uh, or you know what I would like to do? Uh, essentially, I only want to see, I need to find all SOPs that needs, you know, to be, that need to be translated. Uh, so I'm going to find those. So essentially, as you can see, metadata allows us to organize things any way we want. So I just found the documents that need to be translated. And you know what I would like once again uh, to uh, group things by, you know, author and again, filter or sort by uh, a date field or something. So uh, again, essentially, the, the whole idea behind the metadata uh, columns that we built is that we can easily uh, essentially filter, find, uh, filter, sort, and group information in any way we want. Uh, obviously, don't forget uh, all those different views that we have created. Uh, that's another uh, quick and easy way for you and um, your employees to uh, essentially easily find content uh, in your SharePoint document library. 
let me show you something else. So in addition to the filters pane, uh, of course, uh, by default, we have this uh, search, this library search box. And this search box essentially searches everything that's inside of the library. And uh, SharePoint search is pretty powerful. It searches the file name, it searches the folder name, but it also searches the metadata as well. Let me uh, explain that to you. So for example, I'm searching, I'm just typing in you know, this uh, hello keyword, and it found this document. Why? Because uh, it's a keyword that uh, I have inside of this uh, document right here. But let me show you something else now. So I can obviously uh, use the search box and, you know, find uh, the file by file name or whatever text is inside of the document, but I can also search by the metadata as well. Uh, I mean, of course I can do this right here and maybe search for all the, you know, active SOPs, but let me show you something else. I'm going to type in the word active here and look what happens. It actually gives me all the SOPs um, why? Because essentially it searches the metadata tags as well. So whatever you type in in here, searches the metadata tags. So you know what? I'm going to uh, type in Mary's name. Remember, Mary is the author on some of those documents, SOPs. Here we go. Why did it find those documents? Why? Why? Because uh, Mary is listed as the author of those documents. So that's a piece of metadata and it does search uh, this as well. Uh, and uh, by the way, you can utilize uh, just like on Amazon, right? Y you have this search, uh, you know, box um, on the top and then those filters on the left hand side. You can actually combine those in SharePoint as well. You can utilize the, you know, keyword uh, search over here. All right, you see I'm looking for some documents with this particular keyword. And then I also want to um, utilize metadata at the same time. So you can combine both the search box as well as uh, the metadata filters um, in one step. So that's all I wanted to show you in this particular video. Hopefully you found this uh, informative and hopefully you have a little bit more uh, information now and knowledge on how to build uh, your own SharePoint document management system. Uh, before I end this video, I also wanted to show you a few courses that I teach. Now, in this particular video, I covered uh, obviously a pretty basic way on how to build, how to create metadata tags. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are more advanced uh, ways to build uh, metadata. You can actually um, uh, create metadata at the enterprise level uh, and utilize uh, those tags essentially across multiple sites and libraries. And you can also build something called content types where uh, you can create different and unique sets of metadata for different categories of documents. Um, I offer uh, both live and uh, on-demand uh, training in case if you want to learn more about those topics. And if you go to my website, SharePointMaven.com, under training, uh, if you're interested, if your organization is interested in live training, I offer that. If you want to take you know, training on demand, uh, essentially view the recorded uh, version of the course, uh, you can do so as well. And uh, these are the two metadata courses that, that I teach. And, uh, you know, essentially this is where I explain uh, all the advanced ways of building and creating uh, enterprise level metadata. And if you want to learn more about uh, content types and uh, document sets, uh, I actually offer a separate uh, course on uh, th that as well. And um, uh, this, so this is a, an on-demand uh, version of the uh, training. You can just uh, enroll, you know, purchase the course, enroll, and uh, take it uh, uh, at your convenience. Uh, but if your organization, if you have maybe a group of users and uh, you prefer uh, a live format, I also offer the same exact courses in live format as well. So feel free to consider both, uh, I guess, options and both courses uh, if you want to learn more about uh, metadata and more advanced techniques. Uh, but for now, that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video. Uh, once again, I hope uh, you found it uh, informative and useful. As always, happy to see you on my blog, sharepointmaven.com, as well as my YouTube channel. Have a great rest of the day. Goodbye.